So uh, my name is Anjana Vakil. I am from the US, but based in Berlin, and I work for Uber Research, which is a company that deals with data about scientific research funding. So basically, who is giving how much money to which universities to research which topics and what is coming out of that in terms of publications, patents, other research outcomes. Uh, so we develop, uh, we, we on the one hand, uh, collect that data into the world's largest database of, of funding information and we also need ways to get at that data and that's where I come in so I am helping build uh, design and build a query language a domain specific language that can be used to query our data set for end users we intend this to be one way that they can express exactly what it is that they want uh, in the form of the data that they want to get back. The types of users that we're talking about here are probably likely the, the kind of power users that are, um, that are domain experts. Maybe they work for a funding institution. Maybe they're trying to put together portfolio analyses or reports and that sort of thing. And they, they know exactly what to do with the data once they've got it. They just need to be able to quickly express what they need. So rather than forcing them to go through and click through a complicated set of interactions, uh, in a graphical way, if they have a, a query that perhaps they, they already have kind of hammered out the structure of and they can reuse it for, for similar types of queries, that's one motivation. However, we've been designing this language um, actually not with end users in terms of clients in mind, but our, our primary clients are also our interfaces to that data. So for example, our web application that deals with that data or uh, some other interface like a web API that might be layered on top of that or people, uh, developers at our sister companies that need to be able to get at our data to create um, products that are in the same space but fulfilling slightly different needs. So. Our goal was to make something that uh, would make also life, develop, life easier for developers on our teams and the teams of our, our uh, partners. So that's also something that we've been um, keeping in mind, being able to easily express exactly what you want in the terms that we set and not in the terms that our data storage and the query language associated with that sets for us. I do think that uh, when we approach a language, we should approach it the same way that we approach visual interfaces. And so the same kind of guidelines of uh, making something that's clear, that doesn't have a lot of ambiguity, so the user, uh, you know, when, when the user is looking at a web page, do they know what they need to click to, to get where they're going? When the user is uh, writing, looking at the keywords of your language and writing those keywords, is it, is it clear to them what each of those does and how they're, they're going to be getting to the the, the place they want to go, the, the, the statement or the, the question that they're asking. And uh, I think also the idea of responsiveness and dialogue between the user and the language is very important. So just as you would want um, you know, a, a typical interface, a, a visual interface to be, uh, to, to tell the user where they stand, what's been successful, what's not been successful, to help them when they're having uh, difficulties, when they're encountering errors, all of that same type of responsiveness uh, should also be encompassed in the language. So that's where things like error messages come in. Um, we could really do a lot better than the types of error messages that you might be used to getting from, from your typical query languages. So that's something we've been thinking about. Well, this is, this is something that kind of ties in then to another of these trade-offs that you make when designing these things, is that um, we want to be creating uh, an abstraction and a set of, of constructions in the language that is exactly right for our particular use case. And yet, we want to be leveraging familiarity with existing concepts and existing, let's say, query languages. So we don't want to be, um, be coming out with something that is so far removed from anything anyone has ever used to ask about any data that people have, it takes them ages to wrap their heads around that. That's not something we want. And as I said, since we were also thinking about how our developers are going to be using this language, um, leveraging the kind of basic model of SQL is something that, uh, that, that we've been trying to do. So the keywords are a little bit different, but the, in general, the, um, the structure, this idea of it, it being kind of uh, these, uh, these clauses that have somewhat of a similar flavor. So in our language, we'd say something like search grants instead of, you know, from uh, whatnot. So this uh, has been uh, a more general inspiration, I'd say. We are not sticking to some of the, the, 
the intricacies of that. Uh, again, we're trying to keep it as close as possible to our domain, but in general, the flow of the query is quite similar to what you'd find in SQL. Interesting. I think that that uh, touched on a lot of a lot of possible future directions. Um, and based on the keynote this morning on quantum computing, it would be nice to be able to explore all of them simultaneously. But I think that one that you mentioned that is certainly something I've heard, been hearing uh, more about recently is the idea of, uh, let's say, graphical kind of chart-based uh, interfaces to the data so that you could construct a query not necessarily by typing words into your uh, text box, but by dragging and dropping kind of uh, components and creating a flow, a, a workflow of, of how the query should be built. Um, I know that uh, this is something that uh, I believe, you know, Velo's clients have, have uh, mentioned to them and said that that might be useful. It's not something we have particularly been putting a lot of uh, attention into at Uber Research. But once you've got that model that underlies the, the language, and as I said in my talk, I believe that one of the best things you can get out of sitting down and writing down this language is that model. Once you've got that model, it's very then simple to put other layers on top of it, put other interfaces onto it, whether that be kind of a drag and drop interface or something else that uh, becomes really trendy that we haven't even conceived of yet. The only major error that comes to my mind is to make too many guesses about what the language should look like before actually making sure that that is what the users think the language should look like and that's what makes sense to them. Um, I think that if you, uh, if you make too many assumptions and make too many guesses before actually putting it in front of people and seeing what kind of time they have working with it, you're likely to lock the wrong ideas in place. and. Um, Although you want to be able to build the language to be as flexible as possible going forward, you are also going to be held to a certain extent to some of the decisions you make early on because as soon as you do start putting that in front of people and asking them to wrap their heads around a certain topic or a certain concept that you're using in this abstraction, it's going to be difficult to then ask them to wrap their heads around a completely different one uh, six months later. So that's one thing I would say is best to avoid and that, you know, of course, putting it in front of people as soon as possible, especially a targeted, uh, you know, very specific user or user group uh, is great for that. Then to answer your question about tooling, um, as I mentioned in my talk, we have been using a parser generator to make life easier for us so that we don't have to think so much about how the text is ingested and processed into a syntax tree. We can kind of get all of that for free just from our syntactic definition of the language and a grammar. We've been using Antler, A-N-T-L-R, another tool for language recognition. Uh, to do that, it's, it's quite flexible, quite powerful, uh, and yet also very simple to get started with. So that's been very helpful for us with the, the kind of um, rapid prototyping that we uh, need to be doing in order to make sure that we can show this language to people before we make too many decisions about how it looks. Uh, because you reached out to me and said, you know, we're having this, this conference, there's going to be lots of people there from all over the world dealing on all facets of the kind of big data space, everything from uh, grappling with your databases to query languages to uh, distributed systems in general and the theoretical aspects behind that uh, to really anything in the direction of machine learning and analysis and it just seemed like a really great uh, community really great group of of folks that would be here and you know can't say the sunshine didn't have anything to do with it <laughs> so yeah what really sealed the deal for me though was finding out that velo is another company that's working on their own query language and that we had so much in common there and so that's why i was really happy that um we were able to kind of uh, somewhat collaborate and share you know, war stories uh, about these projects. So that's something that made this conference quite, uh, quite a uh, standout for me. No, I would just say thanks very much for having me and a big thank you to Velo for, for also being open with us and, and helping share stories um, about the process of designing languages like this. I think it's something that we don't really hear enough about at these kind of events and uh, all of us that do end up finding ourselves in the position of having to develop a language like this, we end up kind of isolated from one another. So it's great to have this, uh, this conversation going on and get a little bit more, uh, a little bit more connection on that topic.